Krenzel, the Ohio State quarterback, dropping back first place in scrimmage, picked off by Jacob Alamemian, takes it back to the 23-yard line. A few plays later, it's third and 10 from the 11. Matt Dugalecki throws the middle screen to Wesley Williams. A couple of nice moves, dives and gets into the end zone. Less than two minutes in, the Aztecs lead it 7-0. SDSU's next drive, Dugalecki, the slant to Linnell Penman. The play picks up 13 yards in a first down. A couple plays later, Lionel Hamilton takes the handoff, busts it around left end, finally knocked out of bounds at the four. First and goal, Aztec. But then what'll turn out to be the play of the game, Dugalecki tries to force the slant. It's tipped and batted up into the air. Will Allen gets it and takes it all the way down the sideline. Officially, a 100-yard interception return for touchdown, the longest in Ohio State in history. Buckeyes up 10-7. Next drive, another mistake by Dugalecki. Throws the ball right to Robert Reynolds. Another pick for the Buckeyes. The Aztec D holds. They force Ohio State to kick a field goal. Mike Nugent, good from 32 yards out. The Bucks up 13-7 after one period. On to the second half now. Krenzel with the Aztecs in his face all day. This time they get to him. Krenzel fumbles after the scrum. Brandon Rager comes away with it. Aztecs get a golden opportunity at the Ohio State 26, but they do nothing with it. In comes J.C. Mejia. The walk-on, he's perfect from 47. The Aztecs get back to within three. Fourth quarter now, Dugalecki to Jeff Webb, but he coughs it up. Mike D'Andrea comes away with it, and it stays at the 21-yard line. They add another field goal. Ohio State goes up 16-10. Dugalecki gets things going. First, he hits Wesley Williams, makes some nice moves after the catch, picks up 19 yards on the play. And then on third and five, Dugalecki, the slant to Ramal Porter. He breaks free after the first hit. He picks up 18 yards down to the 29. The drive stalls. Mejia comes in, drills a 46-yarder. This kid is money. Ten minutes left. The Aztecs down by just three. Less than four minutes to play. Dugalecki rolling out, buying some time, and finds Devin Pitts. Makes a couple of nice jukes and takes it 23 yards into Ohio State territory. Then a little over two minutes to go. Fourth and ten. Here it is. Dugalecki fires. Incomplete. The Buckeyes get it back and run out the clock. The second-ranked Buckeyes escape, and I do mean escape with a 16-13 win, the Aztecs defense playing out of their minds, limiting the defending national champs to 196 yards, no offensive touchdowns. This from a team that went into the game as 32-point underdogs and playing in front of 104,000 people with a backup quarterback making his first ever start. It's a good feeling because you know you silence that, that huge uh, crowd, you know, and um, they're kind of sitting back in their seats going, you know, well, you know what, what's going on? We were talking about on the news this morning, you know, what quarterbacks, you know, what freshman quarterbacks are going to play in the second half and how much experience their backups are going to get. So, you know, it, everyone's pretty stunned, I guess. Before the game even started, I think people had us tabbed as 1-1, one and, one, and Ohio State was 2-0 and oh already, and the game hadn't even been played. So we took offense to that, and we said we're going to come out here and we're going to play a good game. And I think uh, from the first play on, and they knew what, what kind of game they ran for. Pretty exciting. You know, I think we, after that first, you know, pass or whatever, you know, screen we had, um, a lot of the butterflies went away. Great football fans here in Ohio State. I, I was coming up the ramp, and one of the officers said, as they were clapping for us as we, we went in, he said, that's the first. I haven't heard that before. Real proud of our team. And I think the one thing that you know is this game really meant a lot to Coach Kraft, especially when you consider that nobody east of College Avenue gave this team a chance to be close in this one, and yet there they were just minutes away from a monumental upset. Now the task at hand for the Aztecs to get over the disappointment from losing to the national champs and get ready to hit the field this Saturday in a game in which they should be heavily favored. The Aztecs head off to El Paso, Texas to take on winless UTEP. And folks... This is a bad football team right now. They just got pounded by Division I AA Cal Poly 34-13 a week after losing by 35 to a horrible Arizona team. Kickoff Saturday's game in El Paso set for 6 o'clock. With Tom Kraft and Coach, it was kind of a, an emotional game for you. I mean, at the end of the game, you were you know, you're kind of showing the, the signs. Well, it was. It was a, a great atmosphere, a great weekend, and the fans there are, are very impressive. They enjoy football. They understand it very well. And whenever they got on defense, the crowd would roar and, and make it tough for us. And then when they were on offense, he'd quiet down, let them get their signals and, and call them up. They really are. And, and uh, you know, it was really deafening at times, but a great atmosphere, great experience. But when we came off the field, when they applauded, the effort uh, of our football team and and when people say that's unusual right. uh it, it is touching and it kind of put things in perspective well i i've also heard that uh, on your way out in the buses people lining the roads as they normally do it's 
such a Super Bowl atmosphere, but I mean, they were applauding your team buses as you were leaving. Yeah, they uh, they would stand up and, and applaud and shake their fist and give us the thumbs up. What a great effort. And, and the bus driver even, you know, now he's reminding us, coach, this doesn't happen very often. And, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice for our players to go through that and, and acknowledge the, the effort that they had. And now the big challenge is to follow it up and uh, try to take care of some business here in the upcoming weeks. When you, when you have a game like this, coach, it's, it's not just one guy stepping up. You have to have almost every part of your, your team step up to play a game like this. We'll start with Matt Dugalecki, the, the way he performed. Well, you know, that, that, that's, you know, for him to go 23 or 39, and he had about four or five drops, um, phenomenal game. Got knocked down repeatedly, uh, knocked out of the game, and then he comes back. And that's the thing that impressed me about his performance. And uh, the other thing is, I mean, you talk about the team part of it, Billy, is, is we ran almost 80 plays offensively, which is, is phenomenal against that defense. That's about 25 more than they normally do, which is a half of a football game and for them, uh, what they're used to. And that helped, I think, our defense. And, and Tom Carmar did a great job of rolling in different personnel and, and made it tough on them. And, and we were counterpunching on both sides of the ball. But the other thing that gets lost in this is our great effort on special teams. You know, we really... Uh, did a nice job on that. They came after us uh, on the punt. We had good protection. We had great coverage all day and just an overall good effort. Yeah, this Mejia kid might be all right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? He, you know, when we go up to altitude, he may just bang in a 60-plus field goal. You're being serious. You're, you're going to give him a shot? Definitely. I mean, when he hit that 47-yarder, I mean, he had plenty to spare. And when he gets up in altitude, I think he can pop one from 60-plus. I think that it's important also to consider when, when a player is young, like Lionel, uh, what what this kind of ad, uh, atmosphere and, and and really succeeding in this kind of atmosphere can mean in his career as an Aztec. Yeah, I think it is a good experience, and you know the physical part of that game, Billy. I mean, he, he he's taking it right to him. Uh, he's breaking tackles. He's not timid, and you can see it on his pass blocking too. And he caught two balls in the game. He's starting to open up his uh, play and. Uh, the thing that impresses me is how he handles himself. He does it very well. So now the challenge is to get your guys to come out with that level of play every week, regardless of the competition, because so often you play up or down to your level of competition. And I mean, if you guys can have that kind of effort every week, you're going to sail right through. Yeah. You know, the thing is, we didn't sneak up on them. I mean, it's early enough in the year. They have a, a, a big, strong returning team coming off a national championship. It's not in the middle of the year like it was two years ago. and, and uh, uh, they, they were focused, they took us serious, and, and he told me that, and uh, that's what makes us uh, special. Now we've got we to gotta follow it up, and, and I think we will. I think our team's ready to take the next step in this program. Because the Aztecs have been all about offense, but it's the defense that's leading the charge this season. Highlights from tonight's game at UTEP are next in sports. But the key for the Aztecs was backing up that performance with a win tonight over struggling UTEP. State's defense had the Miners on the run in El Paso. It was 3-0 Aztecs in the first quarter when Jacob Elamimian comes up with the first of his two interceptions. He's off to the races, and 85 yards later, the Aztecs are up 10-zip. SDSU extended its lead before the end of the half as Oceanside's Folly Pomelli busts into the end zone from two yards out. Every time UTEP got close to scoring, the Miners shot themselves in the foot. The Aztecs forced six turnovers in the ball game, and the defense has now gone over 121 minutes without allowing a touchdown. D'Angelo Ned scored twice in the second half as the Aztecs pulled away for a 34-0 win. San Diego State returns home next week to face Samford.